Hey everybody, it's Nick. Today I got a little tutorial lecture, uh, just an introduction to what we're going to be working on uh, in lab for the next couple of weeks. Um, we're going to be looking at building elevations. And, you know, elevations are another kind of orthographic drawing that belong with the set that includes plans, which, which we looked at last week, and sections. And an elevation is just a, is basically like a view of the outside of the building or the outside of an object, right? And um, you can see from this diagram here, if you can imagine that this three-dimensional object, you know, is a building, if you would flatten that, like if you look at this from infinitely far away, this is the drawing here. It's just, you're just kind of seeing it like as like a projection. It looks like this, it's flat. Okay, even though these things are going back in space or going out from a plane, you have your foreground, middle ground, background, everything gets flattened into the elevation. The elevation has a ground, it sits on the ground, and it has like a backdrop or background or context or whatever. That's how we understand something as an elevation. If it was a section, we would see it cut. We might see something inside of the ground, like the structure. But in an elevation, you see the ground and you see it from very, very far away. And I want to note that this is not, these are not my drawings. This is from a book by D.K. Ching. It's called Design Drawing. There's a whole series of books by, by, uh, by him. Uh, they're kind of considered architectural classics. Uh, we have them at the, uh, at the library and you can get them online too. But um, anyway, so these are, these are kind of valuable and these are, most of his books are actually hand drawn, which is, which is, which is quite nice. Um, so again, this is the idea of the elevation. What we're doing are these like flat kind of drawings of the outside. And the idea of the elevation a lot of times is to talk about the facade, right? The facade is the kind of face of the building. We talk about the scale of the building on the site and in context with any kind of neighboring buildings or any, um, any other features of the landscape. We're also looking at the proportions of the building, especially with relation to people, sometimes cars, oftentimes, again, the neighborhood context. Um, also like materiality, we were looking at like what it's made out of, any kind of uh, sheet material, textures, colors, like, you know, those kinds of things. And sometimes the way that light plays off the building too. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. So the way that the, uh, the elevations are drawn orthographically, which is the method that we're going to be using, comes from two things. So if this is the elevation in this drawing, you can see that we have these like plans, right? We have kind of um, the kind of uh, roof plan and then like another another floor of the building. So there's this kind of like um, rounded building with like a, like a roof on top of it. Um, you would project a lot, you, you take the plans and you would line them up with each other and you draw your ground line and you project those verticals, you know, down and that would give you the position, you know, the outer edges of the building that would give you the, the kind of front piece that's sticking out here. And that gives you the position of the roof hip. When you're drawing, uh, the, the horizontal lines of the elevation actually come from either a side elevation or oftentimes a section. So this person's face right here, you can see this, this would be the elevation, right? And you can see that if we project a horizontal line from this person's eyes, sorry, if, we're, if, if we project the line from their eyes, you would understand the position of, if, if you would project a horizontal line from the top of the head, that's the edge of the head, edge of the chin, nose. And actually these kind of would work for each other. So if, if, if I had this elevation, I could make this elevation or i can make this section if i had that information but so the horizontal lines come from sections or from other elevations that we've already produced vertical lines come from plans okay because that's really important to understand so i'm gonna because i'm gonna give you uh sections and plans of a building and you're gonna need to draw the elevation based on that Okay. So here's another example. So you can see like this is it this this like this house. This is the kind of side elevation and this is the the kind of porch elevation, right? And um the oh, this this kind of reveals two different things. Like one, you can see the ground here and the building sits on the ground or the house sits on the ground. You can see how like they use the like background uh tone to set off the building so we can see the form of the building. You can especially see that there is a opening here if we look through the porch that it goes all the way through 
um you can see the like landscape that's being that's being kind of added into it and so like the ground is kind of cut it's not it doesn't necessarily always read as flat that's not always the case um, but we're showing you know this is cut like a section right but it's still flattened and then the building kind of rises out of it um, the other thing to note, and we'll talk about this in the thing, is that when you're looking at elevations, a lot of times it's very hard to understand depth um, without some kind of tone or shadow. Um, you can draw an elevation and you can use line weights to denote hierarchy, and I'll show you that on the next page. But, but shadow and texture and tone and light and things like that are really important because they just, elevations are such a hard drawing to get to read correctly especially with just line weight alone there's a really a lot involved in it so i just want to show you just to really reinforce you know what's actually going on here uh we we'll go to the last page uh, here so yeah well okay so second to last page so the way the elevations work you know a lot of times you'll have the plan of the building and then the elevations are called out by what side of the building they're on so you for floors you might have first floor second floor you know ground floor basement whatever elevations you'll have you know north south east and west elevation and for some projects you'll have to draw all the elevations and for some projects it's enough to maybe just talk about the front elevation and maybe some of the side like one or one or two of the side elevations um this is just as like a second year thing you know when you're actually building something you've got to communicate all the elevations um you also will have elevations when you lay them out with each other they need to share a common ground line and you need to uh, put them in order so you don't you don't skip around you have one that goes after the other after the other think about where and there isn't really i, I to my thinking there isn't really a definite order of these but i would make sure that whatever elevation is the most important one has the most prominent location and everything else kind of unfolds uh from that um, you can also see too that you want to make sure that there's a gap between them you don't what you don't want to do is make this all look like it's one building these are four different elevations so make sure that there's enough space these lines here are just guidelines they're just to show what's actually happening uh don't don't do that or people might people might, might still get confused okay this is just for the sake of this just for the sake of this drawing um, i would have a more prominent kind of ground line you know how they're labeled too the other thing about the labels is that they're coming off of the edge of each of the drawings on the left edge so that's worth noting too there's another example from this section just to talk about the level of detail and things so this is uh, an elevation that might be occurring you know at one eighth scale and this is an elevation that might be occurring at you know i'm trying to think about what it should be probably one quarter scale or even larger um you can see like here you can see like the actual shingles and the um, the siding and things like that. It's quite a bit more detail. You can see like the edges of each of the stairs. Um, here, you don't pick up that much that kind of detail. Here, right? Um, it's not as if you just took this thing and actually blew it up or took this one and shrank it. There's actually a reduction in the number of lines, and that's very important. But you can see like a few things right like how the edges of things are like a little bit are a little bit darker to set them off and then the line weights kind of drop down as you get into like some of the other elements of the building of the house i would still say this lacks hierarchy and you can you could definitely see how it would be improved by some shadow and some and some tone and that's kind of what we're getting at here so this is an example of the of like an elevation without any additional line weights really and you can see how like with when you start to add line weights, you can start to understand that there's like a foreground, you know, kind of element of the uh, of the site being cut. There's a plinth that the uh, house sits on, um, and then you can kind of see the edge of the house and the edge around these windows here. And then as you kind of step in, you'd have lighter um, things with the uh, with the, like textural elements, uh, surface lines, uh, window mullions, like that kind of thing. Again, I. I would still prefer more hierarchy and you'll see that in the drawings that I have, but just to, just to kind of look at the difference between these two, these two drawings. And then if you get to the last one, you can really start to see how, at least in the style that Ching is using here, you know, making the ground like a dark element, you know, that's in the foreground and then having a tone or a texture in the background to let this pop. And then using kind of a stipple pattern for the stucco or the stone, 
separates it from the roof, right? I would still think that like with the glazing and some of the stuff that you could also make that stand out a bit more. Here's another thing too, like look at this tree that's in the foreground, it's in front. Remember I talked about this lesson on the first day, how three-dimensional scenes are created by breaking the foreground with an element. Oftentimes we do that with scale figures, but here we're doing it with this tree and that's also kind of effective, right? There's a lot going on here visually for me. I actually think, I think it distracts from the house. Uh, but I think the point is made. If you look at the difference between like this drawing and this drawing and this drawing, you can see how it's much easier to recognize the form of the building, the massing of the building, but also something about its character. And that's why in this class, we're going to start, you know, this Monday by kind of creating the kind of overall envelope of the building and the line work, you know, based on the drawings we have. Moving on, we're going to add line weights to the building to start to build a hierarchy. And then we're going to go from those line weights in the second week of this, so lab four, and we're going to add in more embellishment. Uh, we're going to work on some color. We're going to add some shadows and things. And I think that's going to really improve um, the way we recognize the buildings. But we're going to we're going to just going to build this up. So it's going to you know it's going to take a little while. But but these are things that will help you to make elevations that, that read really well. And again, like I've always said, remember that these are design tools. It's not just about rendering the building at the end. When you do these kinds of things, they're a study. It's a way to think about like what the choices you're making are and what their impact is. Okay, so, so think about these not as the end of it, but as part of your process, okay? And again, you can see here, the idea of using the line weights, right, is that you cre you're creating depth by having heavier elements in the front be thicker weight and then having them step back to lighter weights, okay? And you can see the same thing with tone, like lots of times uh, where like a darker tone is going to often step out because that's the way that our eyes, you know, uh, work. And then the last thing that we'll, you know, do is, you know, if you look at the way that shadows work, you can see how the addition of a shadow can help you understand an object as part of the ground uh, that it's that it's projecting like a like a shadow on its edge or it's projecting a shadow because it's tall or because it's in the ground and it's a hole or an opening and it's like self-shadowing right that the shadow is actually cast on the inside of it so so shadows are another device you know that we that we have that that also helps um, and that's about it so that's where we're going to be going with this I'm going to be showing you some examples but you know before you really step into it just I want you to you know have this understanding of what the drawing is trying to do and what the tools are that we have to make it to make it work. Okay, it's not just about the technique that we teach or how to do the commands in AutoCAD, but it's really about you know finding this this kind of representation of it um, and understanding what those principles are because you can always change the rules like once you understand them. Okay, this isn't the way that you will always do this, but it's it's one way that we can agree on now that is going to get you a pretty consistent result. All right, I'll see you around.